So, the Tidal Basin update has been out for a few days now. We played the new Stronghold, got the Rule Tier 5, messed around with the new gear sets, the new weapon mods, the new skill mods. So, I thought, let's talk about this update for just a little bit. Sort of give you my thoughts on what I like and what I don't like about this update, starting off with, of course, the Stronghold itself. I think that uh, Tidal Basin was a pretty cool mission. I've seen some people say that they expected more out of it, or that it was a little bit short, but I'd have to disagree with that. At the end of the day, this wasn't meant to be a mini raid of any kind or something. Uh, it was always going to be just another stronghold. And the reason why players beat it with so much ease is, I think, due to the fact that a lot of players had a fairly min-maxed 450 plus gear score build because of all of the weeks that we already played in World Tier 4 and pretty much almost perfected our builds. Uh, the difficulty of the Stronghold was very obviously not tuned for that at all. Uh, I could just stand in big turret gunfire without breaking much of a sweat. Of course I'm taking some damage, but it's not enough to kill me. Uh, and I think that because it was so easy to complete for so many players, well, that kind of takes away something when playing it for the first time. Like, you have the objective to disable the rockets within two minutes, and then the rockets die when shooting, like, five bullets at them. And you're sitting there like, wait, that was it? Ah, okay, I guess. The final boss did have uh, some new mechanic to it, though. This invulnerable mechanic, where... Uh, he couldn't be killed for a certain amount of time after using an ability similar to how the final boss worked in Stolen Signal uh, in the incursion from the Division 1. Uh, and I expect to see something like this and much more in the upcoming raid as well. And although this effect was very minor, it's at least good to see that we should be expecting some other mechanics besides Hey, we, uh, we have NPCs and now they're a whole lot tankier and do a whole lot more damage. So yeah, that's pretty much Tidal Basin for you. Now, as soon as you drop into World Tier 5, gear sets start to drop plentiful. I believe that they only drop from the Black Dusk, but I've seen them drop both in the Invaded Missions and also in the Occupied Dark Zone. And there's also a couple of guaranteed rewards for uh, completing the Invaded Missions for the first time every week. Oh, and of course, the, the hardwired gear set, you can get that through a assignment. And I've already made a video on how to get that, if you've missed that. That's up. I think I uploaded that yesterday, so... If you want to check that out you can check it out here's the thing though i think that these gear sets all three of them are fairly bad in almost every situation compared to what type of builds you could make with just high-end gear there are a number of reasons for this first up is of course that you lose out on a whole bunch of talents really really strong talents like berserk unstoppable force we can have six times 15 percent damage to elites which is 90 percent damage to elites uh, we have Safeguard, Clutch, Patience. There are so many strong talents in this game, and some of them are, in many cases, far stronger than the entire gear sets themselves. Which is, uh, that's definitely something if you think about it. But then, the gear sets, even in an isolated environment, they're also kind of gimmicky and don't even work half of the time. Uh, for example, ongoing directive requires you to constantly swap weapons to fire a few shock, fire, or uh, bleed bullets, which is just a huge loss in DPS. Uh, and yeah, you're crowd controlling NPCs, but if you just played with a DPS build, those same NPCs that are now on fire, they would have been dead already. So what's the point of playing this gear set? And then hardwired just doesn't seem to reduce the cooldown effectively like you would think it does reading it from the description because most of the time when you would proc that cooldown reduction buff, your skills are still up because how could they not? To heal somebody or to kill somebody with a skill, you need a skill. And the cooldown of skills doesn't start until the skill is depleted. So most of the time you're either forced to use your skill sequentially, which is pretty bad for a skill build, and if you don't do that, you don't get any of the cooldown reduction procs. Unless you're playing with the cam launcher, because that has multiple charges. But this gear set isn't made for the cam launcher. It's made for the turret, the, the hive, and also the pole sensor mod. Because if you don't use those, then you're not going to get the shock effect from the five piece. So the whole gear set just doesn't seem to work. And I haven't tested True Patriot extensively myself yet, but I've seen plenty of build videos on the gear set, and the conclusion with that one is pretty much the same. Unless you're spending over 8 seconds killing a single target, you'll never get all 3 stacks on a single target, unless you're on purposely not shooting them, 
And the buffs that you get from True Patriot are really neglectable as well, especially the self-healing. Uh, you shoot a target, you barely get any self-healing back, which I can only imagine is because they give the player a flat amount of healing per bullet instead of a percentage-based amount, and that flat amount isn't scaled to World Tier 5 properly yet. So, yeah, there's that. And also, it seems that uh, damage to armor, the two-piece bonus on Patriot, also has no effect. It just simply does nothing. You would think you get 10% more damage to armor, uh, but no, you get absolutely nothing. And it bothers me quite a bit, because if the developers would have just taken 10 minutes on QA testing these sets in World Tier 5 on a private server, and, you know, just taken some time to see if the gear sets functioned properly, or if the design works in the first place, well, they would have obviously seen these things themselves. So, either they just didn't test them, and they just yolo them into the game, or somehow their QA department didn't notice any of these things. Which, I don't know what to say to that, because... Uh, pretty much everybody I played with noticed these things within 10 minutes of playing around with the set. Even players that don't even play that much Division. Even the YouTubers that are new to the Division notice these things. Uh, so yeah, I've given the devs the benefit of the doubt many, many times before, but honestly, there's just no excuse for this. I do have in the back of my mind, though, that they probably also made the gear sets weaker on purpose, because they didn't want to repeat the same mistake that they made with the Division 1, where the gear sets at launch were so strong and broken that they dominated everything and that they were a must-have. So uh, while making the gear sets, they probably tuned down a few numbers here and there to make sure that they weren't the most overpowered thing. But still, that doesn't justify the inherent bad design on most of these gear sets. Or the fact that some stats just flat out don't work. Uh, but yeah, let's move on. Because there's, of course, more to talk about with this patch. Uh, for example, the weapon mods. Now, many of the weapon mods have had their negative values removed and their positive values lowered by a whole lot to compensate for the negative values being removed. And when they announced that they were going to do this, I personally didn't like that change. And then after having played around with it, I still am not the biggest fan of it. I guess they did it because so many players didn't like the negative attributes, but in combination with the reduction to the critical hit damage and the headshot damage nerfs uh, on the gear, uh, the stat rolls themselves have been brought down lower as well. It just brings everybody's character even closer together than that they already were. Even less extremes are possible now, and in an RPG game that's all about the loot, eh, I don't really think that's too good. I do often look back at the Division 1 and think about how much of a difference you could get between having a full glass cannon build, or a full tank build, or a full skill power build. I mean, not having skill power on your support station build would give you a support station that heals you for like a thousand health per second. But then having a full one support station build, that amount would be 20,000 per second, 25,000, 30,000 with some buffs. I mean, that's, that's, that's a really, really big difference. That's 20 times the amount or 25 times the amount. And if I look at the gear in the Division 2, uh, I can see that the gear system itself is more complicated due to some hidden features about uh, gear stat allocation that aren't explained in the game itself. The gear itself actually matters a lot less since the extremes that you can get to are reduced by a whole lot uh, from the Division 1 to the Division 2 and now again with uh, the weapon mod reduction and the reduction to some of the stat rolls. Again, I guess it's not entirely to do with this update, but the weapon mod changes and the stat roll changes that came with this update made this an even bigger annoyance for myself personally. I mean, players have figured out by now that you can't really be a tank anymore in this game. Players have figured out by now that everybody's skills are pretty much equal. Most of the time they're pretty useless and if you were to spec into skill power you get a few mods, but uh, it's nowhere near the difference than that we had in the Division 1. Uh, so what are players going to do when you cannot be a tank and you can't really be a skill power player? Well, they're going to spec for damage, because that's the only thing that's left. Might as well stack as much damage as possible, which means getting weapon damage rolls, headshot damage rolls, critical hit damage rolls, and other rolls like that, damage to elites. That's pretty much what everybody's been doing. And of course, the weapon-specific rolls, if you're playing around with an assault rifle, you go for an assault rifle. Uh, and what was the reaction to that by Massive? All right, let's uh, let's reduce headshot damage and uh, critical hit damage because players are picking those stats. Yeah, it's a great way to pull everybody together even more. Good stuff.
Aside from all of that though, the patch did also come with a whole bunch of quality of life changes, such as the FOV slider, which was, I, I think this feature is pretty good and can zoom out fairly far. Uh, I was quite comfortable having it not even on the widest FOV possible, and I usually prefer a pretty wide FOV when playing games, so I'd say that there's definitely enough freedom with this. And the developers also changed the cam launcher controls, which makes the skill feel so much better on PC now. But I think that I actually did prefer the old control system when playing with a controller, because self-casting with a double click uh, on the bumper on the controller is actually fairly annoying to do at times. Oftentimes you don't click it fast enough. The bumper requires a lot more effort to double click than a, uh, a mouse, for example, would. Uh, so I think that when I'm playing with a controller, I would actually prefer the old control scheme. It would be really cool if the developers add the options in the menu to change what control layouts they would want to use for the cam launcher or have it maybe automatically changed when you're either playing with a controller or with a keyboard. Uh, something like that would be great, but I don't know if they want to do that. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this video, I guess. That's all that I have to say about the update. The conclusion is, is that I'm not too excited with this patch. Tidal Basin was alright, but the gear sets are pretty underwhelming. Uh, I wouldn't really use them. Uh, and then the weapon mod changes and the, the stat roll changes on gear only exemplify the things that I don't really like about the Division 2 compared to Division 1 already, which is the fact that everybody's build is so similar, which is then made even worse with normalization. Uh, I don't know, I'm really starting to feel like I can get a build in this game that does about 90% of the work that a perfect build would do with just about 10 hours of farming. And so I don't really feel motivated to farm for a truly min-maxed build if I can already get a build that does everything so well with just a few hours of playing. It's like, yeah, the gear system is pretty complicated and there's possibly a lot of options, but at the end of the day, you're only gonna be, I don't know, like five, 10 or maybe 15% stronger with a perfect build. Well, you can just get a somewhat unoptimized build that still does 90% of everything else for you. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't really feel like farming in this game anymore. Yeah, we have a lot of gear, but I feel like aside from talents and some stat rolls, the, the type of gear you have doesn't really matter. I mean, who cares if you got a, the perfect brand sets or not? It's, it's what, like 5% more armor, 8% more health? 10% more damage. That's what we're talking about here uh, from a min-max build to a, a a normal build. So I don't know, but that's, that's other stuff that I guess it's more of a, a personal gripe rather than having to do with the update. Uh, so, you know, I was thinking maybe now that the honeymoon is over, we can uh, talk about these sort of things. We can finally have a normal conversation about uh, all the things that I maybe don't like about the game without getting called depressed and burned out. Uh, but <laughs> we'll see by uh, the dislike ratio on this video, I guess. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. As always, guys, I will see you all later. Or, like they say in the Netherlands, see you later.